Praise the Lord. We rise up as we pray together. You want to commit yourself to the Lord tonight that your mind, your heart, your spirit, your soul, your body, your personality, every part of you will be at the Bible study. You will not just be here and there, your mind in another place. But you will hear the word and the word will reach the very depths of your heart. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. That you come in together tonight with the people of God. To listen to the word of God will not be in vain. That this word will reach out to you. And that's the part of the word which is meant for you. To beautify your life. To glorify the name of the Lord. And to make you live a life free of worry and anxiety. That that part of the word which is meant to bless you will not escape you tonight. In your thoughts, you'll concentrate on the word. You will not have wandering thoughts, wandering here and there. But you'll focus on this word the Lord is teaching us concerning freedom from worry and anxiety. And then you know there is nothing to worry about. Your personal life, nothing to worry about. Work, profession, family, there is nothing to worry about. People, neighbors, friends, foes, there is nothing to worry about. God is on the throne. You want these series of studies to set you free from all anxiety and worry. Pray that the Lord will accomplish his purpose. The reason for studying these words, these passages, that the Lord will fulfill that purpose in your heart and your life. So that in every situation and every circumstance, you will know. And you will act and live as if you knew there is nothing to worry about. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. That's the way to say it at the headquarters. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much at this time. Thank you, Lord, for our Bible study tonight. And thank you because we know you are here. And Jesus, the master teacher, we know that you are here tonight. The spirit of the living God, we thank you because you are here to guide us into all truth. We pray that the truth will do good in every life tonight. In Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that you help us to you know that in the day, in the night, in the week, in the month, in the year, and for the rest of our lives, there is nothing to worry about. I will pray, Lord, that that confidence in you, the boldness and the courage to live life and to go through life with you in front of us and we following you so that whether it's satan or demons or men or people we know there is nothing to worry about instill that infuse that inject that into every heart in jesus name help us to stand stand our ground in this world of storm and waves and problems lord we know that once you are with us there is nothing 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 from anywhere to worry about confirm us in the faith in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're back to our Bible study tonight and we're now in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. We're looking at two verses of scripture. Verses 26 and 27. Open your Bible with me please. Matthew chapter 6. We're looking at verse 26 and verse 27. Behold the fowls of the air. 
for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Those are the two verses we're looking at, but you know that those two verses, they are part of the last ten verses of Matthew chapter 6. Look at here from verse 25. Now, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they which of you by taking thought? By being anxious, by being worried, by being preoccupied with the things of this world. Which of you, by having given yourself hypertension, high blood pressure, because of worry and anxiety. Which of you, by all that commotion and stirring in the heart, which of you, by worry and anxiety, by taking thought, can add one cubit? Unto your stature, unto his stature. The Lord is telling us and is teaching us over and over that we should not worry in life. We should live a life that is peaceful, a life that has rest, rest in our soul, peace in our spirit, and then there's a tranquility in our mind. That from the morning till the afternoon, till the evening, till the night, and then when you wake up the following morning. That you live a life of rest and peace and tranquility. And there is nothing disturbing your mind. It tells us in various ways that we should not worry or get anxious about anything. But before we go on, I want you to look at something in that verse 26. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. That makes us to know that actually this message of not getting worried, not getting anxious, does more good in our lives when we become children of God. Your heavenly father. The very confidence you have that you have an heavenly father. And the confidence of faith and the courage of faith, the conviction of faith that you have. There is an heavenly father taking care of you. It is that knowledge. It is that understanding. It is that faith in the heavenly father that makes you to know if the father is still on the throne. And if Jesus is our savior, if the Holy Ghost is our comforter, if the Bible is true, if the promises are yes and amen. And if these promises are laid and they are founded upon a foundation that will never move. And if we know that this word, even if heaven and earth pass away, that the word of God will never pass away. It is that faith in the heavenly father that gives us the confidence that there is nothing, nothing from hell, nothing from the ocean, nothing from the forest, nothing from the shrine. Nothing from men, nothing from women, nothing from this world, nothing from the world to come that will make us get worried or get anxious. There is nothing to worry about. By the way, we need to understand that it's not everybody on earth that can say God is the heavenly father. But this message of freedom from worry, deliverance from worry, dominion over everything that causes worry and anxiety this message is for the people that can refer to god in heaven as their heavenly father in matthew chapter 6 verse 32 for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things the Lord is making us to know that this message he gave, which is to make us feel, have the confidence of faith and the courage of faith and the conviction of faith, and then we conquer by faith, conquer worry and anxiety by faith, that it is for those who can refer to God as their heavenly father. Romans chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 9, verse 8. 
that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of god they which are the children of the flesh those so can refer to abraham as their father isaac as their father and the jacob as their father children of the flesh that is those who say they are born by religious people these are not the children of god but then it says these the only people the children of the promise accounted for the seed it tells us then how do you become a child of god how would you be able to lay claim to these promises of God that you'll be able to stand by faith and rest in your soul. We're told in John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. These are the people that can actually lay claim on what the Lord is teaching us. Freedom from anxiety and worry. You have received the Lord as your personal savior. And you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord, your master, your savior. And God is your heavenly father. Then you can say there is nothing to worry about. I have a father in heaven. In Galatians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 6. Galatians chapter 4. We're looking at verse 6. And because ye are sons, you have received the Lord as your personal savior. Your sins have been forgiven. The guilt is taken away. The condemnation is taken away. And you have the peace of God because you are justified by faith in Christ. Because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying abba father that word abba there was there you know in their local language in which they wrote the it's like saying daddy hey, when you love him so much and feel that closeness and intimacy with the father and say abba father and then it says in verse 7 wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of god through christ it means that you inherit everything that the almighty God has in Christ. And because of that great inheritance, how rich your father is, your heavenly father. How great and merciful and compassionate and loving your heavenly father is. And how particular your heavenly father is in taking care of you. That's why there is no worry or anxiety. But you need to understand, when Jesus taught the religious people of his day, he made them to understand, it isn't everybody on earth that is a child of God. It's not everybody that can refer to the almighty God as their heavenly father. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. What do you mean from verse 38? I speak that, John chapter 8. Reading from verse 38. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. As you look at that verse, you'll see the father, my father there, is capital F. And then your father there is little R, small letter R. Therefore, they're different. The Lord was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the deeply, highly, greatly religious people of the land. And he said, my father is different from your father. And then in verse 41, ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said, said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now you are going to learn. That it is not everybody that thinks that God is their father. That are real children of God. There are some people that will they claim that God is their father. But when the truth is revealed. Jesus tells them God is not your father. In verse 42 Jesus said unto them if God were your father. You would love me. God is love. There'll be no hatred in your heart if God were your father. God is love. There'll be no bitterness in your heart if God is your father. If God is your father and God is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, you love Jesus Christ. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. 
Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye of your father, the devil. Look up here. You know Jesus Christ. Uh, he knew that they were even seeking for his life to kill him. But Jesus is the absolute truth. And even though he knew that they were seeking for him and searching for him to lay hands on him and kill him, he still had to tell them the truth. He said, for this purpose am I come. That I might show and reveal the truth. And Pilate said, what is the truth? Check up, search the scriptures. You'll find out the truth. Even though he knew they were about to lay hands on him to kill him. And yet he told them the truth. I pray God will give us that spirit. Give me a good day. Amen. Yeah. The spirit to tell the truth. In difficult times. With difficult people. To tell them the truth that leads to life eternal. That makes the people to begin to examine their lives. Whether they were of God or they were not of God. Ye of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. And the father of each. Well in, in uh, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Now that we know. It's not everybody living on the face of the earth. That actually belongs to God as children. The children of God. How do we become the children of God? By faith in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26. For ye are all the children of God. By faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You turn away from sin. You put your faith in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because the, becomes your own father too. In John chapter 20 verse 17. John chapter 20 verse 17. It tells us Jesus says unto her Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father. Isn't it wonderful to have the same father as Jesus has? My father and your father. And Jesus lived a life free of anxiety. Because God is his father. And you too can live a life free of worry and free of anxiety. Because the same God who is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ is also your own father. Have you noticed Jesus never worried about anything? Have you noticed, Lord, they sought to kill you a few days ago in that place. Are we going there again? He said, let us go where they walk to do. Let's go to the same place. There was no worry. There was no anxiety. Lord, do you know that those Pharisees were offended by that sin you said? He said, leave them alone. Every plant the heavenly father has not planted will, will be uprooted. There was no worry. There was no anxiety. Do you know Herod is coming to take you? He said, go tell that folks. I walk today and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected. There was no worry. There was no anxiety. He was in the sheep. And then he was sleeping. And the storm was very great. Master, master, carest thou not that we perish? He rose up and he looked at the wind and he said, peace be still. There was no worry. There was no anxiety because God is his father. And if that same heavenly father, God is your heavenly father to you, there will be no worry in your heart. There will be no anxiety. You will relax. So a peace of mind. Because you know that this same God is your God and is your father. And look at that verse very well. John chapter 20 verse 17. Jesus said unto her. Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them. I ascend unto my father and your father. And to my God and your God. You're, you'll be a child of God. 
and the peace of God will reign in your heart in Jesus' name. God's true children, that is those who are truly born again children of God, should be free from worry and anxiety. For a child of God, worry is a self-imposed, entirely generated disease in the human family that slowly but surely kills many. If you have any worry, you impose that on yourself because there's nothing to worry about. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great physician, the healer of both mind and body, has provided an effective cure. The causes of worry and anxiety are many and they are varied. The causes are so many that almost everybody is getting worried except those who know the mind of God, the word of God, and the will of God. And you know, they are under the protection of the Lord. The rich and the poor, they all worry. The villagers and the city dwellers all worry. Men and women all worry. Married and unmarried people all worry. And the old and the young. Even the fortunate in life, they worry almost as, uh, as much as the less fortunate in life. Everybody finds something to worry about. Whatever the cause of our worry or our anxiety may be, there is a cure that never fails. So we'll find that cure tonight. Those who are permanently cured from worry and anxiety will be able to have peace and purpose and profitable lives that will not have any limit at all. The Lord has prescribed the means for total and perfect cure and we must follow his prescription. You know if you have a disease and then you go to the doctor the doctor will make some prescriptions for you if you really want to get well, you'll follow the prescription two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening, or just one every day, one pill. And then you swallow that at the time the doctor says you swallow it. And sure enough, as you follow the prescription day after day, you'll be getting better eventually. Everything that troubled you before, everything will vanish away. And now the Lord is giving us his prescription. And he's saying, this is what to consider. This is how to think. And this is how to live. And if you live like that every day of the week, Monday, when others are mourning, Tuesday, when others have their troubles. Wednesday, when the wickedness is rising high. And on Thursday, when the thunders of people's anger is a kind of roaring. And Friday, that frightens many people. And Saturday, with their sorrows. If you will just have just the mind of Christ. And everything that he tells you, your Sunday will be a sunny day. And then you'll be shining every time. Every day for you will be a day of joy and a day of peace. A day of no worry and no anxiety. Because you trust in the Lord. And you follow the prescription that the Lord has given you. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is a great physician. As well as a great master teacher. Effective teaching requires much repetition. And that is what our Lord has done in the last 10 verses of this Matthew chapter 6. The experienced teacher knows that it is not enough to teach an important principle only once. It needs to be repeated. That's why I repeated it over and over. And he said, take no thought. After a few verses again, take no thought. Again, it says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought. And then in verse 30, for therefore, take no thought. And as you just uh, follow the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, worry will die out of your life. Anxiety will clear out of your life. And what peace and joy and rest you are going to have when there's no worry, when there's no anxiety. Whatever the message tonight, the study tonight to three parts. Number one, behold the birds and stop worrying. Behold the birds and stop worrying. Number two, better than birds and significantly worthy. Better than birds, than the birds. And significantly worthy. Number three, behave like believers and stop worrying. As you come back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 verse 26. 
Behold the fowls of the air. Behold the fowls of the air. And the Lord is saying there are so many lessons around us that we miss. Because we are so much in a hurry going here and going there. And we do not look at the birds that fly all around. It says behold the birds of the air. What did he tell us to do that? He wanted us to learn from them. And it says, your heavenly father feedeth them. Even though they do not sow, they do not reap, they do not gather into bands, yet there's no anxiety. There's no worry in those birds. It's like they know what many people do not know. Jesus said, you behold and learn not to worry. The birds are inferior to men. But we can learn from them and ju just like we can learn from the ants. What do we learn? We learn that they trust in the Lord, that he will, he will provide, he'll provide for them. Do you know that God cares for even the birds? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree, of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the, of the earth, you see that. And to every fowl of the air, without exception. To every fowl of the air. And to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given given every green herb for meat and it was so do you know that even in the time of creation the lord did not forget those birds it was not an afterthought what am i going to do for the birds what am i going to do for these inferior creatures the lord already thought about them and the, the understanding is that the lord took so much care of those birds that are almost, we can even say, almost worthless. The sparrows and, and the ravens and all those little, little birds, they've got to care of them. How much more? God will take care of you. He will take care of you. In, in Job chapter 38, verse 41. Job chapter 40, 38, verse 41. Who provided for the raven his food? It's, it's asking a question. Who is making the provision for the ravens? When his young ones cry unto God. It says anytime those little, little birds are crying and, and they want food, they're crying to the Lord. They wonder for lack of meat. And then they look up. Don't you see? We should learn a lesson. The Lord said learn a lesson. If you, have, if you are rearing fowls or you are rearing, you know, some birds, every time, you know, they look down and then they pick something, then they look up. And the Lord is saying, they're looking to the Lord. They're crying unto the Lord. We depend upon you for our daily bread, daily sustenance. And if the animals will do that, how much more those of us who are children of God, from this day, there's no fear again. In Psalm 104, Psalm 104, I'm reading from verse 10. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. Uh, you see when the birds sing, if you ever listen to them, they don't go off tune. They just sing well every time. They're just happy every time. No worry and no anxiety. And the Lord is saying, learn a lesson from them. Take a cue from them and then have a life that is peaceful. A life that is undisturbed. A life that is not distracted by all the circumstances of life. And just live a life. And, you know, I hate, for, I would not like for the Lord to, you know, point to me and say, have you learned your lesson? And I say, which lesson? From these little, little birds. I have Bible, they don't have Bible. I can hear the voice of God, they don't have to hear the voice of God. I have the Holy Spirit and they don't have the Holy Spirit. I'm going to heaven, they are not going to heaven. They are just birds 
just, they just, if they die, they just die. And the Lord is saying, why do you allow the birds to have more peace than you have? To have more rest in their soul than you have? And to have more confidence in the almighty God than you have? That they don't worry about tomorrow, they don't worry about next week, they just live their lives. And these are inferior creatures. I don't want the Lord to tell me, are you, are you so low in understanding that you cannot have as much peace at this little little birds have you ever seen the birds sorrowful hanging their heads because there is nothing to eat have you ever seen any of them just you know giving up life have you ever seen any of them committing suicide so dejected and so depressed that you know a bird will just you know see the river like that plunge itself into the river and commit suicide because of depression i don't want the lord to say why do you allow the birds to be wiser than you are to have more faith than you have the birds of the air they depend upon the lord you will depend upon the lord every time there's a negative thought that comes to you look at those birds again because that's what jesus said behold the fowls of the air how they live their lives no worry and no anxiety of anything and yet your heavenly father is feeding them in job chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 7 job chapter 12 we're looking at verse 7 but ask now the beasts and they shall teach thee and the fowls of the air and they shall tell thee the lord is saying if everything i've taught you you don't understand look at the beasts of the field ask them their lives will teach you their peaceful existence will teach you their life free from worry and anxiety will tell you something. And then he says in that verse 7, And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the ass, and it shall teach thee, or the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord has wrought this, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. The Lord is saying we should learn a lesson from them. Even from the little ants, from the little ants, we can learn lessons in Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6 in verse 6. Go to the ants, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Consider the ways of the ants and be wise. Have, have you ever tried, uh, you know, to uh, just learn a lesson from the ants? I have, you know, sometimes some, uh, the ants, they are walking like this. They're going, they, they have a place they're going. And then they're, they're going a straight course. And then you try to put a stick in front of them then they try to climb the stick if they cannot climb the stick they will not stay there and be sweating and be crying and be worried and anxious they just quietly go this way and go this way and then go the place they're going have you seen that before why then do you worry when there's a mountain before you why do you have to fast for 14 days in two days you can just take it just like that ant and go this way and go that way and then you go on your way no worry and no anxiety you know those ants as you know you disturb them sometimes you build something in front of them and then they know where they're going they don't they don't go they don't stay there casting out the demon of humanity you know, you are a human being and you are the one trying to disturb them. I cast you out, I cast you out. And then sweating, their hands don't sweat. They just go another way. And that's why they live their lives without worry and without anxiety. And the Lord is saying, do like that. When there's any disturbance, don't spend your life just concentrating on that disturbance. Just look away from it and stop all these. They cast you out and cast you out. You know, sometimes if you cast too many things out, you might cast your prosperity out. <laughs> you know, your friends that want to help you, you might cast them out. And the people that really love you, you don't know because, you know, maybe they have something they are thinking about. They are not looking your direction. But really they love you in their heart. You might cast them out because of the way they look don't cast them out just go your way no worry no anxiety i said there's no way there's no anxiety you know we learned something last week we said any problem that comes what do we say 
there's nothing to worry about. And not, we must not forget that because, you know, for the ants and for the birds and for everything that lives, anything that happens to them, they say there's nothing to worry about and then they go the other way and they're making progress. You will make progress. In Proverbs chapter 6, let's look at that verse 6 again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou long and consider her ways, some be wise, which have no guide, no overseer, no ruler, and yet they live their lives above all, apart from just learning from learning from the insects and learning from the ants and learning from the fowls and learning from the beasts of the field and learning from the fish in the sea. We can learn from the Lord Jesus Christ too. In Matthew chapter eleven, verse twenty-nine. Matthew chapter eleven. We're looking at verse 29. Matthew 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your soul, unto your soul. It says, We should learn of him. We should learn of him. What does that mean? Jesus never worried about anything. The Lord Jesus Christ, our master, our teacher, our savior, our Lord, our great example. He never worried about anything. And you know what? As you grow in your Christian life, the Lord wants you to be more and more like him. Matthew chapter 10 verse 24. Matthew chapter 10 verse 24. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. In verse 25, it is enough that the disciple be as his master. It is enough that the disciple be as his master. The Lord wants you to be like him. In this area of not getting worried, not being anxious, be like him. Let me just show you some examples. In Matthew chapter 15, be like the Lord Jesus Christ, learn your lesson. Matthew chapter 15 verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they had this saying? And he said, and he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. I'm not worried about that. Why are you not worried, Lord? Because I know my father is looking at every plant in the field. And every plant which has not been planted will be rooted up. And since the father is going to root up every plant not planted by him, why am I worried? In verse 14, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Let them alone. Don't just leave that alone. Don't worry about that. Don't get anxious about that. In Mark chapter 4, that's how Jesus lived. Free from worry. Free from anxiety. Mark chapter 4, from verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship, so that it was not full. And it, he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Asleep on a pillow. I hear there was a storm that you say was resting. No worry, no anxiety. Lord, why are you not worried? Because you look at the storm. Oh, he said, you know, if you saw the scriptures, you'll find out in Psalm 22. They pierce my hand and they pierce my feet. There's no way that the Lord Jesus Christ will die in the sea. It's going to be by crucifixion to give his life for the ransom, for the salvation, redemption of the world. And there is no way he will die in the sea. And because of that, he wasn't worried. He knew that there was no sea, there was no ocean deep enough to swallow the Son of Man. Because of that, there is no worry. Once you read the scriptures, and you know what is said, what is written concerning you, then you know there is nothing to worry about. But you know in this, verse 38, it was in a part of the sheep asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and sent unto, unto the sea. Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? Why are you so worried? Why are you so anxious? How is it that ye have no faith? 
In Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 31. Luke chapter 13, verse 31. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. Get thee out very quickly. Hurry. You should be afraid now. You should be worried and anxious. Get thee out of here. Get thee hands, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do chaos today. They see a lot of things to do here today, and I don't run away from duty. The Father has sent me to do something and to accomplish something, and it must be done. Go tell him. I do kills today and tomorrow and the third day I'll be through. I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. That was the attitude, the rest of mind. The peace in his soul. No worry and no anxiety. And if we are learning from the Lord, we follow the way of the Lord. We follow the pattern of the Lord. In John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We're looking at it from verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. You know, the, the anxiety, all this multitude, what are they going to eat? How are we going to feed them? But the Lord knew what he was going to do. And if you know that God always has a solution, there is a solution for every problem on earth. Every problem in your life, God has a solution. All you need to do is to go to God and he'll provide the solution. Therefore, when the solution comes, there's nothing to worry about. In John chapter 11, John chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 7. John 11 verse 7. Then after that, said he to, the, to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. Goest thou thither again? Are you not worried? They'll stone you. No, he could, not, he could not die by stoning. He was to die by crucifixion. And therefore, all the intention of the people and all the threats of the people will stone him, will kill him. That will not hold. But the disciples had not learned their lesson at this time. They said, the Jews of late, they wanted to stone you. Are you going thither again? In verse 9, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. That's how Jesus lived his life. And that is what is passing across to us. Learn from the birds. Learn from the ants. Learn from the fish in the sea. Learn from the animals in the forest. They all live their lives without worry, without anxiety. Live a life that is free, free from worry, free from anxiety. We learn from Christ to lead, to fulfill the divine purpose without a moment of worry and anxiety. The purpose of creation and existence for the birds is different from the purpose of man's creation and redemption. The birds eat and live and fulfill the divinely appointed purpose without worry and anxiety. Men, the crown of God's creation and regenerated men, men who are born again, children of God, citizens of God's kingdom, are to discover the divine purpose of existence and fulfill that purpose. Discover the purpose of God for your life. Why are you here? Why are you in the kingdom? Why are you alive at such a time like this? And focus on that purpose and don't be worried or anxious about anything. You say, but I don't know the purpose why I'm here. I'll show you in Psalm 4 verse 3. Psalm 4 verse 3. 
But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord has set apart him that is godly, not for demons, not for the devil, not for Satan, not for the people, a wicked people of the world to manipulate. The Lord has set apart him that is godly unto himself. Psalm 43, verse 21. Psalm 43, sorry. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21. These people have I formed for myself. That's the purpose of your redemption. You are recreated and born again for himself. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. And then in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But here a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That he should show forth. That's the purpose of your creation. That's the purpose of your redemption. The reason why you are born again. Concentrate on that. And don't uh, look here and there. Being afraid of this or that. Just concentrate on the purpose of your redemption. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou, hast, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That tells us then, uh, you have a purpose why you were made, why you were created, why you were redeemed, why you were born again. Fulfill that purpose. Uh, you know, we're not, you are not created only to just eat, only to just drink water. Only to just clothe ourselves. You know some people only, only live to eat. We live for a purpose. And we eat for a purpose. And we sleep for a purpose. And we have accommodation for a purpose. The end of life is not to have accommodation. The purpose of life is not to have food. The purpose of life is not to get married. The purpose of life is not to have shelter. We have all those things to make it convenient for us to fulfill the purpose. But some people only live to eat. That's why the Lord is saying the Lord has created you for a purpose and saved you for a purpose. Concentrate and focus on that purpose. And then he'll supply everything you need while you're focusing on the purpose for which the Lord has created you. I pray that your life will be wiser in Jesus' name. Welcome to point number two. Better than the birds and significantly more worthy than those birds. In Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 26. Matthew chapter 6, the second part of verse 26. Are ye not much better than they? Are ye not much better than they? Are ye not much better than those fowls of the air? And you know, every time, once in a while, just stop everything you're doing. And just think, how significant are you? How important are you? How worthy are you? Bought by the blood of the Lamb. Cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Purchased by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. How significant are you? And then there is a place in heaven mansions on eye for you how significant are you you have things that the birds of the air do not have you have a privilege the birds of the air do not have you have a father in heaven the birds of the air do not have and because of that you see how important you are how significant how worthy you are that will set you free from worry and anxiety uh, apart from even apart from birds, apart from birds, how significant are we? You are more significant than even other human beings who are not born again in the sight of God because you are a child of God. Because you are a child of God. And those who are not born again, they are not children of God. You are more worthy 
in the sight of God and them. There was a time that uh, David, I think David, uh, you know, he needed to know these truths from the people that were around him. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 18. 2 Samuel chapter 18. He didn't know and they had to tell him. And what you don't know, I have to tell you, you are worthy. You are significant. You are important in the sight of the Lord. Pack all the birds of the air in the whole world together. All the eagles, all the vultures, all the, all the ostriches, everything, all the birds of the air. All in the whole world, pack them together. You are more worthy than all of them together. And if you are that worthy and God is taking care of them, he must take care of you. You will not die of hunger. You will not die of starvation. He must take care of his own. You are even more worthy than the unbelievers. Let me show you 2 Samuel chapter 18 verse 3. 2 Samuel chapter 18 verse 3. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. They were talking to David. For if we flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die. In all these people, these were, these were people that were going into the battlefield. And David said, I'm a warrior myself, I'll go with you. They said, no, you will not go. We have to keep you somewhere, preserve you somewhere. We have to keep you in shelter, in security, in a fortress. Then they explained the reason why to him. They said, neither, if I for first die, will they care for us? But now thou art worth 10,000 of us. Thou art worth 10,000 of us. Thou art worth 10,000 of us. Always think about that. How worthy you are. How significant you are. How important you are in the kingdom of God. Thank God you are worthy. Thank God you are important. You know, David did not know. He thought, as you know, since uh, Joab is going, let me go. Oh, they said you are not like Joab. And since uh, this other fellow is going, let me go. Since all of you are going, let me go. Let's go and face the same danger. They said, no. Because if half of us, thousands of us, if we die, those Philistines will not bother. You are so significant and you are worth 10,000 of us. And then David realized how important he was in the kingdom of God. I pray God will open your eyes. That's what the Lord is telling us. He says he takes care of all these sparrows and all these fowls and all these ravens. And then if God takes care of them, how important you are. And you can relax and just rest because there is nothing to worry about. One single child in the family is more important to the parents than all the birds in the country. One single believer, a child in God's family is of greater value to God than all the birds on earth. If God cares so much for the birds and feeds them, having no need to worry or be anxious, will he not take care of you and set you free from for his eternal purpose? Of course he will. Think of how valuable you are in the sight of God. Number one, he created you in his own image. Say, I'm created in God's image. Number two, he saved you by the precious blood of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Say, I am, I am I'm bought with the precious blood of Christ. Number three, he has chosen you to praise him. He has chosen you to praise him. And you know, if your voice becomes silent, the Lord is going to lose the praise that ought to come from your mouth. And because of that, he's taking care of you. And then he, he, he sanctified you to love him supremely. Number five, he's teaching you his word to make his own mind known unto you and through you to others. Number six, he has come commissioned you to serve him and to bring sinners to salvation in Christ. Number seven, the prize he has paid to bring you to himself and to fulfill his eternal purpose in you and to prepare you ready for heaven cannot be estimated or measured in any monetary currency of this world. And because of that important significance that you have, that's why he's taking care of you. There is nothing to fear. You are more important than all those things. Will God ever forget you? Never. He will never forget you. 
in Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. I'm reading from verse 15. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15. Can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion? She, can a woman forget her sucking child she, that she could should not have compassion on the son of a womb? Yea, they may forget yet I will not forget you. The Lord will not forget you. <coughs> because you are important in his sight, because of that, he will not forget you in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 10, verse 29. Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 29. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 29. And not two sparrows sold for a farthing. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Without the consent of your father. The Lord will not allow the wind to be, uh, to be so stormy. To be so terrible. That he will, allow, he will forget just a sparrow. A little bird. To fall to the ground. And the Lord will not allow such a great famine that, you know, the sparrow will be so hungry and then there's nothing to eat. And then it will fall to the ground because of hunger. The Lord will not allow that. He says, and not two sparrows sold for a farthing. Sold for a farthing. That's less than a penny. A sparrow. And two sparrows. And then he says, one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very ears of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. You accept that? Of more value, of more, much more value than many sparrows. And if those sparrows will not be allowed to fall to the ground and die of incurable disease, the Lord will not allow you to die of incurable disease. Matthew chapter 12 verse 11. Matthew 12 verse 11 and verse 12. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on a Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? How much then is a sheep? Is a man better than a sheep? You see what the Lord is telling us. He's saying that we're so significant. Therefore, we're not allow any of these things to wreck our lives, ruin our lives, and destroy our lives. He must take care of us. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Five sparrows sold for two farthings. By the way, you know where we were at before. Two sparrows sold for a farthing. Now you traders know the more you buy, the less it costs. Two sparrows, one farthing. Normally, it shall be four sparrows, two farthings. But because you are buying four, now they put one. Five sparrows sold for two farthings. And it says, not one of them is forgotten before God. And, but even the very ears of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. The Lord has repeated it so many times that we shall remember that we're special in the sight of the Lord. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 to verse 18. Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. A book of remembrance was written before him. What's the meaning of a book of remembrance? It's a book that contains the list of the names of the people of God. And if God looks at that very often and he remembers, that one belongs to me, that one belongs to me, that one belongs to me. 
And in times of danger, he remembers, that's in my list, that's in the book of life. A book of remembrance written concerning you, concerning me, concerning all the children of God who are so much concerned for the honor and for the glory of God. And it says in verse 17, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God. God and him that serveth him not. He tells us it's going to make a difference between us and the people of the world because we're significant before the Lord and none of us will ever get any problem that God will not solve. He'll solve all our problems. We come to point number three now. Behave like believers and stop worrying. Because of all that we have learned because of everything the Lord had said. Now you make up your mind. You are going to behave like believers. And you'll stop worrying. Matthew chapter 6 verse 27. Which of you by taking thought. Can add one cubit unto his stature? Which of you by being anxious. Can add one day. To his lifetime. Which of you, by being worried, can add more quality to his quality of life? That's what the Lord is saying. Which of you, by taking thought, by being anxious, by being worried, can add any value, more value, one cubit unto his stature? In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 25, Luke 12, Verse 25 and verse 26. And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? It says, if by getting anxious you cannot add anything to your life, why are you worried about anything at all? Because the worry and the anxiety will do nothing. It will not add anything to your life. Because what God has decided, he has decided. And worry never changes God. And by the way, worry never changes Satan. By the way, worry never changes demons. Anxiety never changes the wicked people. You know, you have, maybe your neighborhood, you have some people and they're after you. And they all say, we'll wreck him. We'll get him. We'll cut him down. We'll destroy his life. And then you begin to sweat. And you're worried and anxious. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? In fact, the more they see that you are worried, the more they want to get at you. Because they know now you have no power. If you are worried, you are not strong. If you are anxious, you are not strong. If you are worried and bothered, then you are not courageous. And once your enemies know that you are not courageous, you are not strong, you are not firm, they'll do more of what they were doing. And so the worry will not stop them. The worst they can do is what they're doing. In fact, you know, to help you, think of the worst that could happen. This is what my enemy is doing. This is what they're doing. Don't stop there. Think of the worst. What if they do more? What if they multiply their evil deeds? And then at that worst, present that worst before the Lord. And say, even if the worst comes to the worst, Lord, can you deal with this? And God says, I can deal with that. That is not up to Pharaoh's threat yet. That is not up to Nebuchadnezzar's fire yet. That is not up to the lions, to the den of lions yet. Whatever your enemies do, whatever Satan does, whatever demons do, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Just stand and say, what if it becomes more, more tense, hotter, more terrible? And then say, Lord, can you still deal with it? And God says, yes, I'll deal with it. And then you go to sleep, you will rest. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14. Ecclesiastes 3 14. I know that whatsoever God 
endures, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. Whatever is happening, it's either the thing is of God or it's of Satan. Number one, if it's of God, my worry will not change it. If God has done it, if God is doing it, worry will not change it. On the other hand, if Satan is doing it, worry will not change it, but prayer will change it. Faith will change it. And then you'll be able to stand, stand on the watch of the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying. Which of you by worrying can prolong his life or add to the quality of his life? Worry is useless and unprofitable. What can man's worry or anxiety accomplish except to weaken you for positive and progressive action? When you are worried, your brain stops thinking. When you are worried, your mind becomes weaker. Even your physical strength, you'll not be able to run as you were running before. You'll not be as excited about life as you were before. When worry and anxiety are there, and so the worry and anxiety will paralyze you for progress, for promotion, for your onward journey. On the other hand, you need to understand since God will not respond to worry and anxiety and unbelief and discontent and murmuring, what does he respond to? God responds to faith and prayer. Whatever the situation, don't worry, just pray. Whatever the situation, don't be anxious. Just look up in faith unto the Lord. And what worry cannot change, what anxiety cannot change, faith and prayer will change that thing. And look at how our faith and prayer, how it turned everything around. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, reading from verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. That sh and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has, he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and, and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. He had an information that Sodom and Gomorrah will be destroyed. But Lord, his nephew and the wife and the children were there. What if he became worried and anxious? All of a sudden be, begins to sweat. But no, no sweating, no worry, no anxiety. You can pray. And so in verse 23, Abraham drew near and said, Well, thou also destroy the righteous or the wicked. Peradventure, there shall be 50 righteous within the city. Well, thou also destroy and not spare the place. For the 50 righteous that are therein, that be far from thee to do after this manner. You know, if you are worried, you will not be able to compose yourself. You will not be able to compose the words. You will not be able to put the right words before the Lord. You will not be able to reason, reason with the Lord. But he said that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous or the wicked. And that the righteous shall be as the wicked, that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right and the Lord said if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city then I will spare all the place for their sakes God was ready to change his mind by prayer, by prayer prayer and faith Exodus chapter 32 in Exodus chapter 32 we're looking at verse 9 Exodus 32 from verse 9 And the Lord said unto Moses I have, I have seen this people And behold it's a stiff necked people Now therefore let me alone That my wrath may wax hot against them That I may consume them 
What if, you know, Moses began to think now, this is all my life. This is all my ministry. I forsook being a king in, his, in Egypt. And I forsook all the pleasures of Egypt. And I gave my life to a ministry like this to rescue the children of Israel. And now God is going to destroy all of them. And destroy everything I've given my whole life to. Worry and anxiety will do nothing. You know, your business or your ministry or the church or anything, something is happening. They will become worried and anxious and we're sweating. Everything is being destroyed. The false prophets are destroying everything. This is happening. This is happening. What if everything goes up in ashes in flames? Worry and anxiety will accomplish nothing. Relax. God is still on the throne. I say God is still on the throne. And so when Moses had that information, you see what he did in a verse, uh, now in verse, um, in verse 11. And Moses besought the Lord as God and said, Lord, why does thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Where should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief? Did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You will not know to pray if you are worried, if you are anxious. The words will escape you. Your mind will be paralyzed. You'll not know what to tell the Lord. You'll just be saying, what are we going to do now? Look at these children of Israel. God is going to destroy them. And my life has been wasted. I've been giving about, you know, all these years. And then I suffered in Egypt. I did this. I got them through the Red Sea and see what is happening now. I'm so worried. I'm so anxious. Eh? What are we going to do now? And God is going to destroy them. Worry and anxiety will paralyze your mind. You'll not even know what to say, what to tell God. It'll just be, you know, wringing your hands together, rubbing your hands together. You'll be, you know, wiping away the sweat. You will kneel down you'll not know what to say because of worry and anxiety relax it is when you relax no worry no anxiety even if the worst comes to the worst that God now has threatened that all these children of Israel I'll wipe them out relax what am I going to say approach the Lord you can pray you can manifest faith and you can begin to reason with the Lord. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. State your case and plead with me. And break my covenant and my promises. Bring everything before me. Don't worry. This problem will be solved. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all the land that I have spoken of will I give unto thy seed, unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repenteth of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. The Lord changed his mind. The Lord will change his mind. No evil will come upon you. You know, you can always pray. You can always pray either standing or leaning or lying down, whatever. You can always pray. And if you can pray, why all this worry, all this anxiety? First, Second Kings chapter 20. In 2 Kings chapter 20, we're looking at verse 1. In those days was Ezekiah seek unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, in order, for thou shalt die and not live. What a message. And when people bring their dreams to us, and they say, I had a dream. I didn't want to come and tell you because it's a terrible dream. But I just felt that well, I should be faithful. So that at least you can, whatever you need to put in order before you die. So you can do it. This is what God told me. And you know, God revealed this to me. It was fulfilled. Five years ago, God revealed this to me. And I told that person it was true. Two years ago, God told me this and it's all true. And now God has revealed this to me about you. And I know. Anything I see like that in a dream always comes through. And then the Lord is telling me to tell you, this calamity is going to happen. What do you do? Worry and anxiety. Your brain becomes hot. 
your flesh, everything within your body, there's much heat. Then you begin to sweat. We need to be pouring some cold water on you now because of the information you have. Had. Why are you worried? What information are they going to give you that is greater than the one Isaiah brought to Ezekiel? And Isaiah said, set your house in order, for you are going to die. You know sometimes how they tell us something, and they may come to tell you about your wife. I'm sorry to come and tell you that this is what God revealed to them. Or it may be that it's not revelation. It's, you know, it's, uh, you know the, the wife has gone to the doctor. And the doctor has carried out an investigation. And from their knowledge, from the knowledge of Isaiah, from their knowledge, this woman does not have one month to live. And then the doctor calls you apart and he says, I don't want to say this in the presence of your wife. I, I want to tell you, whatever you can do to just, just make the woman happy for just a few weeks. Because there is no, except, except a miracle happens, there is nothing. This woman is going from all the medical knowledge we have. There is no one case in a thousand that has ever escaped this. This woman will die. Well, what the doctor has said is not greater than what Isaiah said. Why are you worried? There is a God who raises the dead. There is a God who heals the sick. There is a God that, God, you've given me a wife. And this is the most beautiful thing in my life. I refuse to let this woman go. She's not ready to go. I'm not ready to release her. She must stay. She will stay. Hey, you know, Smith Wigglesworth was. He went out to he went out to preach. The wife was at home, and then, but as the wife was at home, something happened. She had been sick, and then she died. And then uh, Smith Wigglesworth was coming from the from the evangelistic field, and then she just about to enter. And then they called him apart and said something has happened. We're sorry to tell you this, man of faith, Smith Wigglesworth, ever increasing faith, a great book. And then they said, your wife is God. <laughs> Don't worry about that. It's between me and God. It's between you and God. That child will live. That wife will live. That husband will come alive. That business will rise up again. Then Smith Ugos entered and then saw the wife and then picked up the wife dead and then put her behind the wall and said, In the name of Jesus, called her name and said, Come alive. And she came alive. If God can do that, God loves you. I said, God loves you. Whatever information you have heard, something good is about to happen in your life. All those negative dreams and negative prophecies, don't worry about them tonight. We are going to crush them. And we will bury your problem and then we will raise you from that grave. Because the hand of the Lord, the power of the Lord is upon you tonight. There's nothing for you to worry about. God is still on the throne. He opened the Red Sea. He will open the way for you. He drowned the, 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 the Egyptians in the Red Sea. He will drown all those problems in your life. Don't sweat. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Because there's a brighter future on your, in your way. And then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember. O Lord, remember. Don't you know me? I am more, I'm worthy more than the birds. I'm more important than all the fowls of the old Lord. Don't you remember me? I am Ezekiah. I am a king. You appointed me as a king. I've not finished my work. I still need extra time. I don't want to die now. Who wants to die now? I don't want to die now. You will not die now. Remember me now. How I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. Verse 4. And it came to pass. Afore Isa was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him. Those who brought negative news, they'll come back to bring positive news. Those who said you are dying, they will now say you are going to live. I said you will live. A particular family, they wanted to travel to Canada. And then they went for medical checkup. All the members of the, the father, the mother, the children. 
And one of the children, a daughter, a teenager, about 17 or 18, had some real serious problem. And then they told the father, and they said, well, this is a situation, a terrible medical report, that this is what has happened. And then that alone will not allow that child to travel with them. And the whole family wanted to travel together. And it's like now, the problem of this child will not allow the whole family to go. And I happened to go to that location at that time. And they heard that I was around. And then, I, you know, open time off for counseling, see them one by one. And the senior brother of this, uh, of this uh, daughter brought uh, that daughter and said, there's a problem, that's the that's problem. There's nothing to worry about. In your life, God will reverse every negative report in Jesus' name. And then we pray. The normal prayer we usually pray. And then I said, go back for another medical report. And she went back. And that was the following week after they had given the first report. And then the following week when she got there, the same doctor tested her, tested her through and through. And then they went to their lab and checked everything. And then eventually the, 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 uh, the doctors wrote to the, they said, we're sorry, we're sorry. We must have given a wrong report to your daughter. Everything is totally changed. And we're here together tonight. Every negative thing in your life is changed in Jesus' name. Why do I worry when I have a God who drowned the Egyptians in the sea? Why do I worry when I have a God that stopped the sun because of Joshua? Why do I worry when I have a God who destroyed Goliath in the presence of David? Why do I worry when I have a God who kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the burning fairy furnace and they were just walking one, two, three, and then for the son of man was with them. And Nebuchadnezzar said, servants of the living God come out. When I have a God like that, why do I worry? Why do I worry when I have a Daniel that spent a whole night in the lion's den and then the following morning Daniel, servant of the living God is your God whom you serve day and night able to deliver you. Live forever O King my God, who myself has sent his angel he has stopped the mouth of the Lord and he said come out and he came out and there was no hurt upon him. Why do I worry when I have Jesus who walked upon the sea and he said it is I be not afraid. Tonight, why are you worried? Why are you anxious? What's bothering your mind? Why can't you come to God and say, God, I'm not ready to die yet. I will not die. But I will live. I will declare the glory of God. Everything you are worried about will cancel everything tonight. Why don't you stand up and say, I'm not going to worry in my life. It's nothing to worry about anymore. Nothing to worry about anymore. I love God. I will not worry. I believe in God. I will not worry. I'm serving God. I will not worry. I give my life to Christ. I will not worry. I believe the word of God. I will not worry. I can pray. I will not worry. I have the same God of Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego. I will not worry. I have the same God of Daniel. I will not worry. I have the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ as my heavenly Father. I will not worry. And the one who drowned the Egyptians in the Red Sea is my God. It's my Father. I will not worry. The one who saved and protected Daniel in Lyons then, he is my God. He is my Father. I will not worry. The one that struck, the one that sent the angel to strike Herod and then he died immediately and then he delivered Peter out of the prison. He is my God. He is my Father. Because of that, I will not worry. The one that healed Ezekiah and added 15 years to his life he is my God he is my father I will not worry the one that raised up Jairus daughter he is my God he is my father I will not worry the one that multiplied bread and those 5,000 people ate just a boy's lunch he is my provider I will not worry he will keep me in perfect peace because my mind my heart is resting and staying on him there is nothing to worry about there's nothing to worry about in your life in your in your family concerning your wife concerning your children concerning your husband concerning your business concerning your future concerning your progress concerning your promotion concerning bearing children concerning getting married concerning anything in your life there is nothing to worry about i will not worry i will not worry i will not worry why don't you tell the lord there's nothing to worry about there's nothing to worry about there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. 
What can the enemies do when God is on the throne? What can the demons do when God is your father? What can Satan do when God is your father? What do you worry? What are you worried about? In the day and in the night, every time and everywhere, before people and before angels or demons, nothing to worry about. Because God is on the throne, he'll take care of you. He is your heavenly father. Have you given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? There's nothing to worry about then. Are you born again? There's nothing to worry about then. Do you have the spirit of God bearing witness in your heart that you are born again? You are a child of God. There's nothing to worry about then. Do you believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross of Calvary? There's nothing to worry about then. Do you have the promises of God that are yes and amen? There's nothing to worry about then. Do you know that the Lord is your shepherd and you'll not watch? You'll not lack anything. There's nothing to worry about. Then do you know that God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus? There's nothing to worry about then. Nothing to worry about then. He lives inside your heart. You live in him, he lives in you. And he said, Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then there's nothing to worry about. By worry and anxiety, you cannot turn equality to your life. But by faith and prayer. By prayer and faith. By faith and prayer. By prayer and faith. Leaning upon the arms of the Lord. There's nothing to worry about. It will destroy. It will destroy. All those Goliaths. It will destroy. All those strongholds. It will destroy. All those enemies of progress, there's nothing to worry about. He'll take care of you. He is the one who saved you. He had a goal in saving you. He had a purpose in saving you. He had a reason in saving you. He'll take care of you. Yes, he'll take care of you. Anywhere, anytime. He'll take care of you. You need to get married. He knows about that. He'll provide. Your own children. He knows about that. He'll do it. He's a specialist in making impossibilities possible. He does the incredible. He does the unbelievable. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He has not changed. He cannot change. Trust in the Lord. That's what the people of old, that's what they did. Abraham trusted in the Lord. Abraham trusted in the Lord. That's how he was able to pray. Make up your mind. There's nothing to worry about. Whatever happens, around you whatever you feel in your body whatever sickness whatever infirmity whatever challenge whatever pressure whatever oppression relax there's nothing to worry about you know worry will not allow you to pray anxiety will not allow you to pray and worry will not change anything worry will not change anything anxiety will not change anything but pray and faith how that will change. How that will change. Every negative thing and turn. Every negative thing to become positive in your life. Live your life on the positive promises of God. Not on the negative information, negative dream, negative revelation of men and women. Live your life. On the positive revelation word of God. These promises will never fail. The promises are yes and amen. The promises are yes and amen. You have any challenge? You have any problem? You have any predicament? You have any mountain? Why don't you just speak the promise of God and think on those promises. And live on those promises. And be steadfast on those promises. And know that those promises are yes and amen. The promises will cancel every problem in your life. 
The promises will crush every problem in your life. What has Pharaoh done that you're afraid about? Think of Pharaoh doing something worse than he has ever done. And God is still up to the challenge. What has Nebuchadnezzar done that you're worried about? What's their threat that you're worried about? Even if Nebuchadnezzar were to do worse than he's doing, yet you'll still overcome. What has Herod threatened that you're worried about? You can still stand on the rock of ages, on this infallible word of God that will never change. And you can say, Lord, I'm resting on you. Lord, I'm standing on your word. The word that will never, never, never change. And those words will change every circumstance in your life. Trust in the Lord. Believe in the Lord. Hold on to the promises of God. They will never fail. Heaven and I shall pass away. Heaven and I shall pass away. But my words, Jesus said, will not pass away. Heaven and earth may pass away. The storm may rise. The floods may come. The flame may become hotter. There's nothing to worry about. The Lord knows how to solve your problem. Rest in the Lord. And put all the problems right in the hand of the Lord tonight. And say, Lord, I leave all the problems with you. I leave all the problems with you. I leave all the problems with you. And as you hand over all the problems into the hands of the Almighty God, you'll find the Almighty God taking care of those problems. It's up to them. It's up to them. It's up to them. He can, he can meet every challenge. Yes, he will meet every challenge. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I am. Make sure that God is your heavenly Father. Make sure you are born again. Make sure you are a child of God. Make sure you are trusting in the blood that flowed from Calvary. Make sure that you are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. And then there's that assurance in your heart. Unshakable assurance. Unmovable assurance that you belong to the Lord. And then whatever may be tied. Whatever may come up. Whatever may arise. You know that the Lord is taking care. Yes, you know he's taking care. Yes, you know he's taking care. Yes, he'll take care of you. He'll take care of you. Promise the Lord tonight never to worry in your life. Promise the Lord tonight never to be bothered. About any information you hear. About anything you see. About anything you know. About any persecution you have. About any threat of the enemy. About any challenge in your body. And about any condition in your place of work. Resting on the promises of God. Resting on the arms that hold the universe. You say, yes, I know those things are there. But there is nothing to worry about. There is nothing to worry about. Trust in the Lord. And he'll see you through. Trust in the Lord. And he will see you through. Trust in the Lord. And he will see you through. Trust in the Lord. He's still on the throne. The same God of Abraham. He's still on the throne. The same God of Moses. He's still on the throne. The same God at the time of Joshua. He's still on the throne. The same God at the time of David. He's still on the throne. The same God at the time of Elijah. He's still on the throne. Now the same God in the time of Elisha. He's still on the throne. Yes, he provides. He quickens a mortal body. He heals a sick body. He gives victory to our soul, to our spirit. Whatever temptation, whatever trial. Believe that the Lord is still on the throne. And the Lord will see you through. Standing on that promise of God that will never fail. The unchanging word of God, the infallible word of God. That will never, never, never fail. Trust in the Lord and take heart. 
trust in the Lord and take heart. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Just say, Lord, I believe your word. I believe your promise. I believe you'll never change. I am God, I change not. And Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. You can trust in him. Any storm in your life? Any storm in your life? Yes, you'll overcome the storm. Just go to him without worry, without anxiety. Worry never accomplishes anything. Anxiety never accomplishes anything. Fear and unbelief will not accomplish anything. Only faith. Only faith in the Lord. And with your faith in the Lord, you can stand. And you can be, you can be assured that God will roll the problems away. Never be sad or despondent since you have faith to believe. You have faith to believe. Believe. Believe the word. It will be yes and amen in your life. And then that word of promise, the word of power, will cancel every negative thing that the devil is trying to bring to your life. Then you can stand on that word that the almighty God himself has given to you and then on the basis of that word you can live a life a life free of anxiety a life free of worry a life free of fear a life free of depression a life that is free of panic a life that is full a life that is joyful. A life that is happy. A life that is peaceful and resting. In Jesus' name we pray. Headquarters, amen. Do you know you are victorious already? You know there's nothing to worry about now? You know that all your problems are solved? Do you know that you live a better life, a richer life, a happier life, a higher life? In Jesus' name. Your friends will laugh with you. Your enemies will be sorrowful. Satan will regret. Your persecutors will regret. All the promises of God are for you. The almighty God is on your side. 
If you are the only one on earth to claim those promises, the Lord will fulfill them in Jesus' name. Now from tonight, you promise the Lord there's nothing to worry about. As we're going back home, nothing to worry about. As you go to your place of work, nothing to worry about. As your enemies threaten, nothing to worry about. As your friends forsake you, nothing to worry about. As maybe they delay your salary, there is nothing to worry about. God is going to take care of you. Where you will reach, you will reach. What you will do, you will do. Anybody that stands in the way, you will get to where you will get to in Jesus' name. Just make up your mind that no matter what they do and no matter where they are as you're making your journey, if they stand in the way, don't look at them and don't focus on them. Don't worry about them. Just go your way and the Lord himself will get you to where you ought to be in Jesus' name. You will reach your goal. You will climb every mountain. You will solve every problem. And you will enjoy the goodness of the Lord in your life in Jesus' name. Now before I pray, I need another amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Just raise up your hand. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because from tonight, there is nothing to worry about. In the sea, on the land, in the air, in the forest, in the village, in the city, in the church, anywhere and everywhere, Lord, we cancel every reason for worry and anxiety in Jesus' name. Every brother here, every sister here, I release you to the blessing of the Lord. Every plan of the enemy, every plan of demons, every plan of Satan, I cancel your life in Jesus' name. That life-threatening disease in your life, I cancel it right now. And I command you sickness, come out in Jesus' name. All those negative dreams, all those negative prophecies, all those negative threats, I command you be cancelled in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every good thing that your people desire, you give it unto them. And Lord, I pronounce for them a happy life, a good life, a prosperous life, a contented life, a protected life, a secured life, a victorious life in Jesus' name. From today, what you are not able to do before, you will do. Where the Lord has appointed you for you to reach, you will reach there. Every enemy, every obstacle is cleared out of your way in Jesus' name. You go out now to pick up your success. In your life, nothing to worry about. In your family, nothing to worry about. In your profession, nothing to worry about. And I pray as God blesses your material things on that final day, you'll get to heaven. I pray the Lord will confirm every miracle in your life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. The joy of the Lord will never.